guys, Kevin here. So last week uh, I, I did a video on the killer chiller. Um, the results kind of were not that great. I think the fluid got down to 58 degrees if, if my memory is right. And when I compared that to 2013, the fluid got down to 25. So, you know, I was kind of wrapping my head on what it could be. So as you can see, I did insulate the tank with some uh, foam, some closed cell foam. It's not the best job I've ever done in the world. This is kind of more um, function over form, but it's it's not the ugliest thing in the world. So we're gonna start today with a totally cold engine. It is, as we see, 72, deg uh, 72 degrees in the garage. The fluid is 71, 72 degrees, so we're within half a degree. So everything in here is, is totally room temperature. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start the car up, let it idle for eight minutes on AC, and see if the fluid gets around the 25 to 30 degrees, which it did back in the day. You know, um, if it doesn't, then we know that something else is wrong with their air conditioning system, could be the compressor. Um, this car actually, back in, I think it was 2015, it actually destroyed the um, compressor. It totally, it didn't seize up, but it totally, destroyed itself on the inside and the orifice tube which is like in here in the killer chiller behind the bumper it was totally clogged up with a bunch of dirt and grime and i don't even know what it was but so we had to replace the air uh, the compressor we had to replace replace a few other parts in the system and uh, we had to replace the orifice tube so what i'm wondering is if some you know extra particulates have gotten in that orifice tube and re-clogged it so we'll be able to really test the efficiency of the system and we'll be able to see um, what the temperature of the vents are. So we'll start the car up and we'll go, see what she can do. And uh, we'll take the car for a spin tonight and we'll be able to log the uh, intake air temp one and the charge temp. I'll see if I can get the GoPro to perfectly capture it. So we'll start a starter up, see what we got. the AC on uh, we can see the intake air and the charge temps are right there we'll go take a look at the filter temp Intake air is actually the mass airflow sensor at the filter. Charge temp is post blower. Um, so you can actually see with the car sitting here, um, the air going into the, the blower is actually colder than the intake air is because it's going through the really cold killer chiller water. So what we'll do is we'll take it for a ride. 
and we're gonna do a few pulls and we'll be able to see how much the um, charge temp goes up from the start of a pull to the end of the pull. And then you'll also be able to see the other uh, strange uh, scenario where at least with big cams is, not that my cams are actually not that big, but I should say aftermarket cams. Aftermarket cams have a little bit less vacuum and at idle and off throttle scenarios, so you say you're at the end of a pole and you're off the throttle, the charge temp skyrockets. And that's, Todd tried to explain it to me, it's just because there's less vacuum, there's less air traveling across the sensor, so the sensor reads a hotter setting than it is truly. So we'll take it for a ride here and we'll see how the uh, temperatures look, all right? We can see that the, um, the cold air intake or the ram air intake for the crusher is not quite as good temperature wise as the old JLT intake that I used to have, um, the one that went into the fender. This one being the Ram Air style is, um, you know, heat soaks a little bit more because you're getting the hot engine bay air instead of the colder air in the fender.
refrigerates the fluid to colder than it is outside and then you pass it to the intercooler underneath the supercharger and that's hot and then you pass it through the heat exchanger which is warming it up to ambient. So we're uh, about five six minutes in and uh, we're taking the temperature and we're showing uh, 65 about. Um, you know somebody had mentioned to me that what we're taking a temperature of is actually the steel at the bottom or the aluminum. So uh, don't tell the wife here, but we'll, we'll take the, this for the uh, cooking. So the water is about 57, 58 degrees, which is pretty remarkable when you think that everything in this engine bay is completely fucking heat soaked. So I think overall the system uh, now with the addition of the foam tank is actually operating pretty well. Uh, you know, the, the cabin temps are really great. We saw really truly ice cold temperatures. Uh, the water temperatures were actually, I, I think, still pretty good. And you know, um, the, the car for the couple of rips I did felt pretty strong. You know, when we look back at the heat soak that it had back when I was racing Andrew, you know, I think what the real issue is, is these cars, especially at 21, 22 pounds of boost, they're just going to naturally get a little warm. I still think a trunk tank with the really big pump and the one inch lines and all that is probably the better option. But with what I got now and how my car is set up, I'm probably gonna keep rocking this and enjoy the car. And I hope you guys uh, stay safe, all right? Talk to you later, bye.